You want to make your pit bike faster. You want to make your pit bike stronger. You want to make your pit bike last longer and you want to save some money. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's get into it. Hey guys, and what is up and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over and I'm going to show you over 15 different tips, tricks, hacks, and mods you can do to your pit bike to make it better in every which way. Now, these mods can be applied to any sort of pit bike, any dirt bike. Really, it's just some really good knowledge for you guys that I think you guys are going to love. So let's just get right into it with uh, tip number one. So our first mod is a great mod mod for if you break any of your plastics on your bike or like whether it be your fender flare, your, your rear fender, uh, some of your chain guard like in my instance I had my chain guard here. So here are my ingredients if you will. We've got some Gorilla Glue, Sharpie and some baking powder. So we got our crack here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by applying some of this Gorilla Glue onto the crack followed by putting some of the baking soda right onto it and that's going to give sort of some sort of material there for this to bond to other than just the glue sticking together so now we have our piece here and it's all solid one piece so i'm going to go ahead and take the sharpie and obviously you can go ahead and clean i'll wipe this up quickly and then i'm going to go over with the sharpie and just color in the white and it'll be black so while we're down here at the rear end it's going to lead into our second tip which is going to be so if you're over on the passenger side of the bike trying to tighten the axle and you're having problems getting the wheel actually up against this plate here where you put the tension against on the chain, a really easy trip to get this, a really easy tip to get this up butted against the plate is to go ahead, grab a wadded up reg, you're going to put it down underneath the chain and just roll the bike backwards and that's going to suck this bolt up forward up against this plate. Now for our third tip, there's absolutely zero reason that any of you shouldn't have this mod done. Absolutely every single one of you should have one of these on your bikes. If you want to take care of your bike and make it last long, it's like crucial. It's 20 bucks. It's like a must get. Uh, and just for future reference, everything I'm going to be talking about in this video, uh, it's going to be linked down in the description. So everything I'm talking about, you can find easily in the link. I'll have it linked out by tip uh, for whatever parts I'm talking about. But this part is like super crucial. I don't know how you don't have one if you don't already. But this, this little guy right here is simply called an hour meter. And all it does is it has this little ground wire here. And this runs down onto the spark plug tube, which goes on to your actual spark plug of the engine. And it's simply, it just counts the hours of the engine. So you know when to do your engine maintenance. So I can see that my frame, this bike itself, the suspension, everything on it, I know it has 30 hours of ride time. Like that's what, how long this engine had been run for before I destroyed it. Uh, it had 30 hours of run time on it. So I can, I can know when to do my oil changes, when I need to do some fork seals, you know, when I need to service parts, that's super important. Otherwise you're just playing this guessing game the whole time on, oh, I think it's good enough to do an oil change. It's not just good enough. You need to know it's super important. So get an hour meter, super easy to install. You literally just wrap a ground wire around the spark plug tube. Simple, boom, bang, yeah. Now this is a really great tip for all my enduro riders or anyone who rides in any sort of trail systems where you might have trees or maybe you just want to protect your hands, maybe you want to protect your clutch lever, your brake lever, so you're not breaking them all the time. Uh, a really great and cheap way, once again, this is another $20 mod, super affordable, super worth getting, is a set of these hand guards. And they protect your hands when you're holding the handlebar, so you can't, like this is gonna be what hits a tree if you smash a tree with the front of it, or say you drop the bike down, you got this to protect your lever so your lever is not ever being dug down into the ground so you don't break your levers off, saving you money. So you spend $20 on a set of these instead of a $40 pair of these, right? So 20 bucks for a set of these so you don't break these ever and then you're never spending that $40 over and over buying those damn brake levers. But if you're really just that stubborn and you don't want to ride hand guards or maybe you're like, oh, I don't ride in trees, I don't, want, I don't want hand guards on my bike, they look stupid or blah 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 or whatever your reason is, uh, this next tip then can help you out as well on how to save your brake and clutch levers. Really simple tip. Now if we look at the end of my handlebar, imagine there was no uh, bark buster here and my handlebar ended right here. So on your stock bike, you can see you can see where this is positioned here, the clamp of the actual, this is my clutch lever, but same thing on the brake lever. You can see that there's some gapping here between the end of the throttle and the end of the other handlebar. So when you have this stock, this is usually slid all the way up to here. And what happens is that this is not the farthest thing sticking out on your handlebar. The clutch lever is sticking out past it. And so when you fall, the clutch lever or the brake lever is the first thing that goes into the ground and you snap them off. So if you just loosen these two 
uh, 8 mil bolts here and slide this collar down the handlebar and this whole brake assembly down on the handlebar the handlebar will be the first thing that actually hits into the ground and you won't have as much of a bad time or as bad luck of actually hitting these into the ground and breaking them as well as on top of that if you get some of these you can see that mine actually fold completely back the other way so these are called reversible levers so that even if you didn't have some of these bark busters and you hit into the ground boom they fold backwards and then they don't end up snapping like the stock ones they don't have this little this pivot backwards fe feature, right? They only go to there and they only pull in. So these are a great little feature, these handy levers. I think they're like 32 bucks or something Canadian uh, for the pair of the clutch and the brake lever. So once again, links down below in the description. All right, so this next tip is a twofer and it's a twofer in a real good way. One, I'm gonna show you what uh, people have been teaching you right and then I'm gonna show you what you may have seen on the internet that's teaching you wrong that you shouldn't be doing because you shouldn't be doing it. Uh, so first thing is I'm just gonna go ahead grab some of my body plastics It's a bit easier to show you this because I actually have the piece removed off the bike This is just the rear uh, mud tail flap piece guard, whatever you want to call it um, But a really easy way if you're gonna go on a really muddy ride and you know You're gonna get your bike just coated in crap is to get some This is my preferred brand, but it's called Jigaloo and it is a light lubricant uh, and it just you spray this go ahead take some of the jiggle and literally just like spray some lubricant on the underside of your um, Plastics and that's gonna help keep mud from sticking to the actual panels So when you go to wash if you know you're gonna go for a really, really muddy ride this will help you Now if you got WD-40 or something that works great for that purpose But what WD-40 doesn't work all that great for is lubricating your chain. I see a bunch of people on YouTube saying, oh yeah, you know, don't buy chain lubricant. You don't need to worry about it, right? You can just use WD-40 because everyone has it. Well, yes, WD-40 is a lubricant, but it's also a degreaser and you don't want to degrease your chain. You want to keep that shit lubricated so it doesn't blow up on you. So putting WD-40 is just going to result in you always having to put WD-40 and put it on consistently on your chain or it's going to dry out. It'll be lubricated for a while. Yeah, sure, it's a lubricant, but it's also degreasant and you need the grease in the chain because that's what keeps it lubed over time. So if you want that, you want to put a lubricant, specifically get some goddamn chain lube. Like chain lube is not that expensive, All right? You buy, you buy a can of chain lube. Shit's gonna last you forever, cause let's be real, you guys probably don't ride all that much. I do, but so one of those cans doesn't last me all that long, but it's worth it. It's like 30 bucks, go buy a can of chain lube, keep your chain in good tack, you know, unless you got a China chain, then fuck it, cause it's a piece of shit chain anyways. But you should have a nice chain, get a nice DID, a Renthal, something like that, get that, an, maybe an RK chain, whatever, whatever's available, but get some sort of upgrade, cause I tell you what, like my stock chain was so damn stretchy, and it always came off and it was just a pain in the ass. So once I upgraded to the new chain, there's zero issues. But I can't say enough about just don't use WD-40 on your chain. Just go buy some goddamn chain lubricant. Anyways, let's hop into the next one. And our next tip we got for you is a completely free one and it's just gonna take some learning because you need to do it. And it's called body language. When you're riding your bike, you need to be moving around. You know, you need to you need to stand up, you need to sit down, you need to lean back, you need to lean forward, you need to lean side to side in your turns. You gotta move around. If you're sitting on the bike, you're just staying stationary, that's gonna result in a really rough ride and you're gonna have a really rough body feel the next day when you wake up you're you're, you're gonna be sore so like moving your body around on the bike it's gonna help you have the most control over the bike uh and prevent you from crashing and wiping out and ruining your bike any more than you need to because let's be real they're toys and you're gonna take them in the woods you're gonna you're gonna be rough on them of course they're a dirt bike they're not a it's not a antique that sits up on the shelf this is something you take off jumps popping wheelies doing burnouts you know being a being a hoon again being a being a reckless little piece of shit so you know, you gotta take care of them. Now our next mod is something I have featured on the channel before, uh, and that is a seat grab handle. So if you guys want, I'll leave a card up in the top and you guys can see uh, I've already made a video on how to actually just make one of these for free. Uh, this is just a ratchet strap uh, piece of snap-on cable and it's just bolted into the frame and the seat slides in the hole here and then you have this handle above your bike and you can pull it and lift the rear end of the bike by this handle instead of always having to reach down and grab it by the swing arm and possibly burn yourself when the exhaust is like coming up here. It's one of these grab handles. It's super, super, super nice. And I, I tell you what, the first time you have one of these on your bikes and you get into one of the situations where you have to use it, you'll be so goddamn thankful that you have one of those and that you're not reaching down when you're like sunk up to here in like 
mud and the swing arm's gone and you need to pick up the rear end of the bike because you're just spinning in the mud. That's super nice to have, not to reach down into the water or whatever. You can just grab it right from there, pull the bike up onto whatever you need to and keep ripping. Another good trick is to take some black Sharpie and whenever you get rashing, if you have a black rim, like this here, I got a nice piece of rashing, you can go ahead and just take your Sharpie and then once that gets dirty again, that's gonna blend right back in. So our next great tip is for when you're using Allen keys and you're trying to get into a bolt or something that's really tough and you just, you can't get it out. So uh, a great tip is take a pair of vice grips and uh, just sit the vice grips pinched up onto the actual Allen key and that's just gonna give you a whole bunch more leverage on getting that really tricky or maybe even if it's just not long enough and you can't reach your fingers all the way into the bolt that's back here just by holding it here, you can add some more length on by having the vice grip there so now you can reach that bolt back there. Now we all know when we're washing an exhaust never to spray water in the tailpipe because the water goes down the tailpipe and into the cylinder and you blow up your engine. So you, you normally you stick a rubber plug in the butt of the exhaust. Right? Well, I don't have a rubber plug. You probably don't have a rubber plug, but you probably have some duct tape. And I tell you what, the duct tape works as a great plug for an exhaust to keep the water out. Just take that, stick that bad boy right over, and no problemo, you're not spraying water in the exhaust anymore. And you can wash around the exhaust without worrying, rip it right off, bada bing, bada boom. No waste on a $30, $40 plug. Just buy some more duct tape. And on to our next tip is these are your bolts that actually control the tensioner, which is this plate, which tensions the chain on here. Which these, So these bolts are really, really important that they move freely. So you may leave you know, your bike dirty and water gets in there and it gets a little corroded and it might get rusty and you might not be able to move these bolts and then your, your bike's always going to be spit in the chain because you can't actually adjust these to push the plate out to make it tighter on the chain. So what I can really, really recommend is that you go ahead and put some never seize or some sort of grease. You take this, take this 10 mil here, take, you gotta take the nut off, take the wheel out, take the plate off, take this little gold bolt out, put some of this never seize or grease onto it and re-thread it back in and then you'll have this grease and you'll never have to worry about this ever getting seized up because if they do, it's a total nightmare and if it snaps in the swing arm, good luck, have fun, you're gonna hate your life. Now if you wanna make your pit bike faster, a really great way of making your pit bike faster for really, really, really cheap, like $11 cheap I'm talking, is gearing. Get some gears, get some sprockets, upgrade a sprocket, one of these guys right here, you get an upgraded sprocket that goes on the motor and it's just a different tooth count. The higher tooth count you go up in the front, uh, the more top speed you get. So if you want more top speed, you uh, just put a slightly larger tooth on. You can get noticeably more top speed on your bike. If you put a smaller tooth on the front, uh, you can get noticeably more acceleration. I wouldn't jump too far in too many tooth. Like if you have a 14 tooth, I wouldn't go up to like a 20 tooth or something obnoxious because you might run into a bit of like load issues on the bike where you're kind of, the bike is loaded because the gearing's so long in the bike. Like, so I, I originally, my bike came with a 14 tooth. I went up to a 16 tooth and there's noticeable gains. There's like a 10 mile per hour top speed difference. And you notice it throughout all the gears that they're slightly longer. You get to ride the bike out a bit more in each gear. Uh, and I'll have a video, I'll be up in the, in the corner. You guys can click that. I can show you guys how to install it, how to do the whole gear change, how to make your pit bike faster. Uh, and then that'll lead us into our next tip, which is gonna make your bike even faster than it already is with the gearing change and everything. This is like a must do mod. Whether you just bought your bike, you've had it for a while now, if you haven't done it, you totally, totally, totally should do it. Once again, links in the description, there'll be all the parts that you need. This one is a, is a must do, is upgrading your carburetor, getting a Makuni carburetor. It's gonna change it. Your, your fuel trims are gonna be way, way, way better. And you're gonna be actually burning fuel efficiently and making the most amount of power out of what you can. And then while you're there, you swapped in a carb, you've done your gearing change. Now the last thing I can tell you to make more power out of your bike is to put some high octane fuel. Put some 94, put some 91, 90 whatever you got. Now if you got friggin' 100 and something octane, stick it in there. More octane, more power, more power baby, you know, do it. It's just the way to go. So once again, I'll have videos on putting the carb in, how to put gearing in your bike. Um, I got videos on all that stuff. So if you guys wanna check that out, it'll be here up on the side of the thing. Make sure you guys click subscribe, like this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.